Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week starting the 17th of July 2022 and uh, at Trading 180 we use really fundamental and risk sentiment analysis to determine our directional bias over the medium to long term and um, use supply and demand strategies like uh, stop hunting and capture pain relief as well as uh, what you're seeing in this video, what you will see in this video, which is uh, daily supply and demand zones um, to really uh, time our entries and uh, really try and capitalize on um, potentially bargain exchange rates. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and we'll get into really the week ahead and what's potentially coming up um, and also uh, some in-depth technical and uh, more fundamental analysis. So, um, I'll skip the uh, the summary and just really kind of go straight into the, um, the a bit more of the details. So on the macroeconomic data front this week, several indicators, including the NAHB housing index, um, housing market index, housing starts, building permits and existing home sales will provide an update on the housing sector at a time rising borrowing costs and prices weight on consumer affordability. Um, investors will also keep a close eye on the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index, CB Lending Index and S&P Global Flash PMIs elsewhere in America. Canada's CPI figures are expected to show inflation continuing much higher. Um, continuing to march higher uh, with annual rates seen at 8.3 percent wow um uh which would be the highest since december 1982 just like 40 years um other interesting data to follow include retail sales for canada and uh uh, mid-month inflation rate for Mexico and Can um, Canada, the Bank of Canada actually hiked um, like 100 basis points, uh, 1% um, recently uh, to try and um, uh, stem inflation. So they're trying to get ahead of the curve. Um, but uh, let's see how that works out. In Europe, all eyes will be on Thursday's um, ECB monetary policy decision with the central bank highly expected to start raising rates for the first time in more than a decade. So market consensus is pointing to 25 basis point hike, although bets on a bigger 50 basis point hike increase have risen recently as the euro hovers around parity to the dollar and July's inflation rate is likely to be confirmed at a new record uh, of 8.6% on Tuesday. Matter of fact, I'm just trying to strain my eyes. I should have just zoomed in. Right. Um, policymakers will remain unsure of a future Russian gas supply as flows through Nord Stream 1 will stay halted until July uh, 21st when the key pipeline is set to finish seasonal work. So um, there is um, uh, the rumor that, the, uh, that, that Vladimir Putin may keep the gas supply switched off uh, to um, to Europe, which would basically um, cause a, a massive energy crisis as if there wasn't one already, and uh, push the, the the price of you know gas through the roof, which would definitely hurt Europe. Um, so um, you know the reason why we have reached we reached euro dollar parity is one of the reasons is because of the uh, impending um, you know economic crisis that Europe is facing, as well as as well as the rest of the world, right? Um, and so on the economic uh, side, flash market PMIs for the eurozone, Germany and France are likely to point to a further slowdown across the manufacturing and services sectors uh, at the start of quarter three and consumer confidence across the 19 block is seen at a 27 month low. In the United Kingdom, traders are heading for a busy week with, with main releases including inflation jobs report, retail trade, consumer morale and flash PMIs. Uh, Britain's consumer prices uh, likely accelerated further by 9.2% in June, a new record high in retail sales are seen falling for the second consecutive month. The unemployment rate is expected to hold at 3.8% and wage growth uh, to pick up only slightly. So wage growth um, that adds to inflation worries as well. It, central banks around the world are trying to get inflation down. So they need to really, you know, monitor um, uh, things like wage growth, which if, if wages are growing, it adds to the uh, to rising inflation uh, there's a correlation there so uh skipping to japan bank of japan will probably keep its loose 
uh, ultra loose monetary policy stance uh, despite concerns over a weak yen which holds at levels not seen in 24 years the central bank will also release new quarterly forecasts other important and that is it that is actually important as well um, to look for their quarterly forecast central banks um, other uh, important data to follow includes ex exports um, and imports inflation rate and flash pmis yeah so you know that will tell you really the state of uh, whether you know Japan's economy are in a, uh, a surplus or a deficit, and as well as uh, what they're going to do uh, with regards to the monetary policy when it comes to inflation in Australia. I'll be meeting uh, minutes are expected to provide more clarity on the central bank's move for August, uh, with more investors now betting on a 75 basis point hike rate hike following strong jobs figures in June. The Westpac leading index and flash S&P global PMIs will also be um, in the spotlight and elsewhere uh, it will be interesting to follow New Zealand inflation rate for quarter two uh, exports and imports Malaysia exports uh, and that's pretty much it that we trade so lots pretty much going on this week which will kind of determine again the medium to long term bias and what really central banks are doing with uh, rates what's happening with the economy and in the short term, uh, you know, in, in typically days and sometimes weeks, prices are driven by really liquidity because the banks are actually looking at exchange rate value in the medium to long term. Hence the, you know, the phrase buy the rumor, sell the fact. The rumors uh, of, you know, depending on obviously the uh, whether a central bank is hiking or cutting or whether an economy is getting stronger or weaker, um, you know, you'll see that play out over, uh, you know, months not over you know days so you could have a period where you might have you know this week might you know be a bit of a down week for the dollar but overall the dollar should really be a buy do you know what i mean so um you know all, any any pullbacks should really be looked at as, as buying opportunities if you want to be a buyer of you know a certain currency now um i'll tell you what, what my bias is on on each of the pairs that i'm analyzing as we get into the technicals and starting off on the dollar index and in fact, let me go to the dollar index now. Right, dollar index, uh, which is just a basically a measure of dollar strength against uh, the major uh, currencies like the euro, the yen, the pound. And um, I was expecting prices to kind of, you know, a week or so ago to kind of maybe cool off a little bit. But I think the dollar is again the best of the worst. So regardless of you know it, it, you know the, the the direction, my bias was always to buy the dollar, and I was hoping I could buy the dollar on a pullback, right? <laughs> but it just looked like you know prices just keep going higher and higher. So um, I think any pullbacks to you know the 107s, more preferably probably like the 105s, uh, and using that as confluence when buying, for example, the the dollar yen or um, you know something like uh, the, the pound dollar and shorting the pound dollar um, would be obviously something that you want to look towards uh, and this actually technically is a demand zone as well because you've made higher highs there um, but for me it's not necessarily the strongest area of demand uh, we're still quite an, an expensive area but looking at the, uh, the dollar fundamentally we've got you know the odds of a recession uh, within the next year at 50 percent a survey shows and the probability of a downturn up sharply from 30% odds in June and growth estimates were cut while inflation projections rose. So the odds are now close to even that the US economy will slip into a recession within the next year as persistent and rapid inflation emboldens the Federal Reserve to pursue higher or larger interest rate hikes. Right? So the probability of a downturn over the next 12 months stands at 47.5% up sharply uh, from 30% odds in June, according to the latest Bloomberg monthly survey of economists. In March, those odds were just 20%. The latest survey was conducted between July the 8th and the 14th with 34 economists responding about the chances of a recession. So, um, you know, all eyes are, you know, typically on uh, the, the, the the US economy, but simply because obviously it's, you know, one of the world's largest economies, you know, apart from China. But um, when trading currencies, you kind of have to look at the currencies that you're trading in relation to what is happening with the dollar. So I tell, you know, for example, the members um, in the private members group um, that I mentor, right, you know, the, the headline is, is that the dollar is heading into a recession, but who's going to be heading into a recession first, right? Is that's the one that you want to sell. 
and the one that is lagging, for example, the one that is least likely to head into a recession or the one that's going to head into a recession last is the one that you want to continue to buy. So it's like the dog with the least fleas, as was talked to me. And I've always kind of kept that in, you know, my mind. Um, I say talk to me, but it was said to me, you know, by my mentor, uh, you know, and uh, great trader and friend, uh, Mark Chapman. And so he always said, who's the dog with the least fleas, right? So... For me, the dollar is the dog with the least fees, and you know I've been saying that pretty much all year, every single week from the beginning, from last year, I've been saying pretty much, you know, to you know my bias is to buy, you know, the dollar because the dollar is really the dog with the least fleece, um, regardless of what the headlines say, and we'll get to Europe in a in a, in a sec, but um, but um, also as well the the U.S. economy, you know, careens between glee and gloom with each data release. So um, reports on jobs, inflation and consumer demand are sending conflicting signals, making it harder to see if a recession is coming. So, you know, in the last report, we've just seen that, um, you know, basically it's a 50-50 coin flip. Yeah, up to 50 percent, you know, doesn't mean that it's going into a recession. It just means that, um, or is it 47.5 percent? It just means that you know, it literally is the flip of a coin at this moment in time, whether the, the US economy will enter a recession or may avoid a recession at, with all the data that, you know, is known. So um, this is obviously another interesting article. So the economy is putting out very mixed vibes. One day there's an indicator that points uh, towards US recession. The next day, talk of the expansions, um, demise uh, and dismissed as exaggerated after another stellar jobs report. It's really odd to think of an economy where you add 2.5 million workers Sorry, and output goes down, said Federal Federal Reserve uh, Governor Christopher Waller on a July 7th webcast. I don't know what kind of world does that. So there are mixed signals, but one thing I do know is that regardless of whether the US heads into a recession or not, um, it looks like it's going to do it next year. Now, there are currencies, you know, like the euro we'll get into that might that might actually head into a recession this year or sooner than the US. So that's the reason why you're seeing... Um, you know the uh, the uh, the euro dollar hit parity and probably go. You know it, it looks like it looks likely that it might even go below that. And if you go to my um, YouTube channel um, and look at some of the videos in the videos tab, I explain this. In fact, in this video here, uh, which was recorded again, private members. It's kind of like a, about a seven minute clip from a private members group from the sixth of July, where I kind of um, go over. Um, you know why I was still uh, buying the dollar or my bias was to buy the dollar um, you know even if a recession is coming so uh, and you'll see what happened from the 6th of July obviously until uh, the dollar hit parity anyways um, uh, so for me going back to the technicals I think any pullbacks to zones that I want to be a buyer at um, anywhere probably you know below the uh, uh, monthly moving fair value um, is, is what I really want to look at. Anyways, moving on to the um, dollar yen. And the dollar yen keeps going higher and higher. In fact, it's the 138. 140 is being touted as um, a bit of an extreme uh, where the uh, Bank of Japan may start to intervene. And if it starts to get a bit hawkish, then I'm going to be a buyer of the Japanese yen. But for now, if prices you know start to pull back on the dollar, I think that's going to be you know decent areas to look for buy trades um, on the dollar against the yen. Um, yeah, I think I think even in the risk off environment, um, the dollar seems to be or, or is, it it is also as well a risk off currency. But I think the uh, the, the the Bank of Japan, I think, but I know the Bank of Japan is looking at the one forty area as um, you know it might have to start defending. The uh, the um, the yen uh, devaluation and really start to put a floor underneath that. So one um, forties are definitely uh, to be watched carefully watched, and um, and so if it does start to um, go above that, then um, I will start to probably start to initiate some sort of uh, yen uh, buy trades, which. Um, again, I will probably want to wait for a trigger as well, which will be um, some sort of hawkish uh, statement from or indication from um, any of the you know the central bank or the finance minister. But buy trades for now, still, if prices pull back. 
Um, and that's my, you know, my personal bias. If you are looking to sell, then I think you're gonna have to wait for proof of value, wait for prices to really prove that they're selling off and then look for any kind of pullbacks into any supply zones. Um, the dollar Swiss franc and the dollar Swiss franc looking at uh, where we are from a demand zone perspective as again my bias is not really um, uh, uh, looking at this currency pair to be fair because you've got the uh, Swiss National Bank hiking rates and you've also got the um, the, uh, the dollar looking to hike rates but the uh, Swiss National Bank have really just started to hike rates so they're early on their cycle whereas the but the dollar are typically, or say typically, but they're looking to um, to actually maybe start to come to an end uh, with their hiking cycle. So, as bullish as I am on the dollar, I'm also aware that um, after the next maybe you know from September October, you might start to see um, the dollar start to tail off. There might be a cap to the upside. So, um, but looking at where we are now, I would probably say a bit of no man's land in terms of buying and selling. If you're looking at buy trades on this currency pair from a daily supply and demand area, you're looking at a pullback to that zone there. If you're looking at any kind of sell trades, then you're looking at either prices to pull back up to the highs. Um, and this isn't necessarily the freshest area of, demand, of, of supply, so I'm not really too keen on that. That would have been the best area to look for any kind of sell trades. Um, or you're looking for prices to pull back to prove that there's supply there and then a pull back into that zone before getting uh, short. Um, but I'm not really having got really got a bias on that on that uh, pair uh, dollar CAD a uh, bit similar in terms of um, you know my bias I do think that once the dollar starts to weaken though um, the the Canadian dollar could be a very nice buy against the actual um, against the uh, US dollar so think for now for zooming out the nearest supply zone is probably going to be like a one from from the uh from the 20th from 2020 two years ago so i don't know how significant that's really going to be to you know today's um uh, uh trading but um uh, there are uh, several bank analysis um that that think that the uh, dollar in a risk off environment should want to continue you know going higher so um uh, that's really where the play is. I'm not again. I'm not a buyer of the uh, the uh, dollar against the CAD. I think there's much better um, uh, uh, currencies to buy the dollar against, and the CAD really isn't one of them. I think the CAD's probably one of the stronger uh, currencies. So um, I try and avoid strength versus strength from looking at strength versus weakness. Um, but from a risk-off perspective, you would expect the dollar to go higher. Again, I would probably ex say to you, if you want to get short, wait for prices to really kind of prove that there's supply, and then a pullback into that zone would be, you know, preferable to uh, really get short if you really want to buy the CAD, the Canadian dollar against the US dollar, um, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Again, um, I was saying at the par last week and the week before that the path of these resistance is to the downside simply because you have. A lot um, uh, risk off, right? And in a risk off environment, um, you tend to uh, commodity currencies don't tend to do well. So you've got uh, really some supply there, and you've got supply here. Um, in fact, probably there and there. So um, from that perspective, I think. Um, any pullbacks are going to continue to be short in opportunities um, just based off of you know the dollar being the stronger out of the two and where money typically flows into in a risk off environment and it should want to you know if the prices you know pull back to any of these zones I think you know those are really short in opportunities until um, you know the, the, the global economy on fears on you know the global uh, economic slowdown start to dissipate um, then I think the, the New Zealand will be a buy commodity currencies will be a buy but for now I think against the dollar um, you want to probably look to um, buy the dollar against uh, commodity currencies or certain commodity currencies anyway uh, pound dollar so the pound dollar um, uh, still looking to get involved in this uh, to the short side uh, here are where the supply zones are 
anything below that that monthly moving fair value i, I tend not to want to uh, trade i think this is an expensive area but once it starts to come up to the 21 uh, uh, uh 21 day which is basically the monthly uh period um uh, moving fair value then that's where i want to look for uh trades because i'm not looking to trade in expensive areas right i'm looking to wait looking for you know bigger pullbacks before looking at getting uh short which would be represent you know fair value at the end of the day um so for me um my bias is still to the short side so looking at the uh the the, the pound um the pound actually had some decent uh, monthly news so the uk gdp tops expectations with a 0.5 percent gain in may so the month on month um uh, reading for GDP actually came out um, way more positive than expected. So the UK economy grew 0.5% in May while manufacturing output and construction also expanded more quickly than expected, Lizzie Burden reports. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, there was some positive news for the, for the pound, but I do think overall when it comes to who is, again, the dog with the least fleas um, out of the pound and, for example, the, the dollar, um, the pound is going to be the dog with the most fleas, and so the um, the UK, you know, UK families are nearly nine thousand pounds worse off in in compared to other current uh, sorry countries. A report says the British families are nearly nine thousand pounds worse off than households in in comparable countries due to a toxic combination of low growth and inequality, according to a new report, a study published by the Resolution Foundation think tank and School of uh, School of Economics LSE estimates that the income of the typical lower middle earning family um, is is a third less or eight thousand eight hundred pounds worse off than in comparable nations so um you know cost of living is going higher and even um you know we're earning less than um comparable economies right so um, with inflation at you know these types of uh, high levels, I wouldn't say record high, but very high levels that we haven't seen in 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 decades, you can see you know where you know the UK really is 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 struggling. So I think that struggle will continue into the you know the third and fourth quarters of this year, and we may even enter into a recession. Uh, you know, if not this year, probably be the beginning of of next year uh, technical recession anyway where you've got two negative quarters um, of course that could change but again we deal with probabilities and the likelihood of things happening and as long as you know we're buying the rumor uh, that's really what you know where the money is made so I think that is the rumor uh, still and so for me my bias is really to the short side if you're looking to buy the uh, pound again it's very um, very difficult to buy the pound at the moment you have to really look to maybe these 114 lows so we didn't see these lows until what again like two years ago so let's see what happens there that, that was at the pandemic um, again for me uh, technically this is also another uh, supply zone but again I'd probably want to see prices really pull back to the monthly moving fair value um, uh, prices before I look to get involved in a short on that uh, euro dollar moving on to the euro dollar and um, yeah you pretty much see seeing what's happened uh, with the uh, with the euro hitting uh, parity and going below parity um, uh, this week and uh, Europe's impending recession right leaves ECB in a deeper policy bind so the eurozone's energy driven inflation may not ease by much and some economists don't see hikes going far if economy shrinks so Europe is bracing for a recession that may do little to tame record inflation testing the metal of central bankers who are just days away from raising interest rates after a decade long hiatus and the problem that the European Central Bank has is that it doesn't want to hike it doesn't want to hike rates too much or it can't really hike rates too much because the economy might not support it and um, it might push the um, or bring on a recession um, uh, uh, quicker than expected because you know what you're doing is you're raising borrowing and lending costs which um, are going to affect businesses um, you know cheap money is what gets you out of a recession so um, if you're heading into a recession but you're hiking rates um it's not very it's, it's the opposite of helpful right the economy has to be able to support the uh, the rate hikes um also as well 
uh, yeah, so that was actually I should have done this one first, really. But the the euro drops to um, you know dollar parity for the first time in two decades. So um, we all know this. This has been their headlines, and but the, it's the fundamentals that have been you know driving this. Um, you know uh, the the price over the medium to long term and again if you go back and check really what I've been saying every single week is really you know short euro short euro I've been doing it saying it all pretty much a year is um, is for me to uh, my bias is to short the euro and you're seeing pretty much you know the reasons why um, so I, I continue to want to short this euro so it's just pullbacks to uh, you know supply zones daily supply zones which is basically where uh, these these areas are and if prices can come back to these zones I wouldn't necessarily say this area here because it's below again the monthly moving fair value but um, if there are setups you know just above that or if basically prices start to you know trail around here and then we get a move where the uh, monthly moving fair value comes down to that zone then that will start to be a area that I might look to potentially buy but uh, again my bias is to the downside if you're looking to buy Again, you'd have to really wait for proof of value, wait for really price to kind of prove that there's strength there, there's demand there, then a pull back into that zone before looking at any kind of long trades. Um, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar, and um, Aussie dollar again, pretty much like the New Zealand uh, dollar. You've got uh, well, pretty quite a wide zone. Um, like commodity currencies are going to struggle against the US dollar at the moment I think but I think one of the uh, buys when the dollar does start to weaken um, I think um, the, the Australian dollar is going to be that one of those currencies so let's see what happens um, is it due a you know, bigger pullback possibly but um, I, I, my bias personally would be for a, really just a pullback into any kind of supply zones before looking at um, getting short anywhere around here but it's not really a pair I'm looking to trade anyway so I'm not going to spend too much time on that but from a risk off perspective um, the, the money should flow into the US dollar um, uh, and let, but let's see what happens there uh, Aussie yen Aussie yen and uh, my bias is to the upside and so um, again you might think to yourself well you just said you know that we're, we're risk off uh, you know, you should want to really buy the uh, Japanese yen, right? And uh, I think there is going to be a time to buy the Japanese yen, but the market, you know, seems to be kind of flirting between um, uh, what is traditionally considered uh, safe haven uh, assets and money flowing into safe haven assets and also as well um, fundamentals, right? In terms of, um, you know, where's the, where, where do I get the highest returns? And I think one of the things you've got to watch for if you are looking to trade this currency pair is is really the, 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 the dollar yen at 140 because I think if it starts to push above the 140s, right, uh, then you may uh, look for potential sell trades because, you know, there's going to be a potential trigger from the uh, central bank not tolerating the 140s well that's basically the number it could blow through the 140s it could go to 141 142 nobody knows but um you know the the, the more the, the more devalued the yen gets is the more pressure it puts on the uh, the bank of japan uh, to do something about a devalued yen so if you start to see prices reach that 140 on the um on the dollar yen then you probably may want to you know take profit if you're going long on this and maybe start to potentially short the aussie aussie yen um, um bias so buy the yen once the uh, bank of japan look to potentially intervene um so my bias for now is still long until you know we possibly i can't see us getting anywhere past this uh 96 area if the price comes to this 96 area and you're seeing again the, the dollar yen uh maybe at the 140s plus then um then yeah i think it's time to potentially look for a short trade and gold gold has not been doing well at all in the short term um i do think though that this is um a definite buy in terms of if you're buying physical gold and silver this is basically cheap uh, this is this is bargain prices really um, and 
from a uh, oh not that one where was I I think I had uh, euro dollar exchange rate price okay it's this one right so gold set for the longest run of weekly losses since 2018 on the dollar right and um, Com commerce bank bank expects price to rise on recession prospects um, and gold fell to below 1700 an ounce Thursday for the first time this year so really the key is is recession right so um, I think in the short term as the dollar starts to go higher and still appreciate it obviously affects you know gold or should affect gold because it's it, the dollar and gold are inversely correlated right so um, this kind of you know uh, reinforces that that idea and says while high inflation and growth threats typically aid gold the precious metal is wilting as investors weigh the prospects for bigger or more frequent interest rate hikes from the fed trying to curb price pressures gold doesn't pay interest and like uh, and like other dollar denominated commodities it suffers when the dollar rises still investors expectations of an economic recession in the u.s should benefit gold as a safe haven according to commerce bank analysis analysts so um again in the short term while the dollar is still you know pretty much king um it is affecting you know gold they can move in the same direction and they have done historically but i think with investors you know holding dollars uh, while the Fed is hiking rates um, and getting a return on their dollars, um, even though it's you know being eaten up by inflation, well eaten up by inflation. Um, in fact, it's you know real real rates are still um, negative. Um, I think the, it's, this is just really just a, a nice buy, uh, buying opportunity, especially when it comes to physical. If you're not trading with any kind of leverage or anything like that, if you're buying physical stuff, then this is an absolute bargain. I think and the prices could go down to obviously below that. But I do think if you think that in the next you know year that we should have a potential recession and the dollar uh, should should weaken right then you know you're thinking next year right so 2023 on a price chart is just basically here right 2023 this is going to be in mid 2023 so you could start to see in fact you know as we go into next year price of gold start to go higher so this is actually a very nice buying opportunity people tend to look at you know uh, this in in the short term and think what's happening with gold in the short term but the smart money all the smart money have been looking to do is looking to buy and a few weeks ago maybe about three four weeks ago i showed you a lot an article where central banks are buying gold it's no coincidence that not they're not buying it they, if they don't want to buy up here right for central banks they're not buying they don't want to buy expensive levels they want to buy for cheap because they understand that you know what's coming in 6 12 18 months time or what's potentially coming in that time so this for me is a absolute bar bargain buying beyond just you know looking at a price chart um uh you know in trading um gold you know if you're a gold bug then just look at this as a nice buying opportunity not financial advice of course you know do what you want um uh but um yeah from a trading perspective uh, I would probably say uh, you've got really prices coming down to these types of lows which again that level has been touched several times so it's not necessarily the strongest area of demand but it could start to reverse from here or even to go below that right who knows but um, for me buying opportunities um, if you're looking to sell then you're looking for a pullback into either of these zones supply or you're looking at a pullback all the way up into the 1814s uh, 1807s to look for a potential uh, sell trade from there um, anyways that's pretty much it for this week um, I hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care and speak to you all soon